Good morning. How are you? Good? You okay? Good. Um, excellent. Thanks for tooting your horn. I appreciate that. Welcome to 9 o'clock worship at Beulah Presbyterian Church. Uh, we're also glad that you're joining us on Facebook Live and on YouTube. Uh, and Sermon by Phone, all those various platforms. How exciting that is. Uh, we have a couple of announcements this morning, and first of all, we're going to hear from Bob. Good morning. Uh, today is Bucket Sunday, and it benefits beautiful Beulah beautification of all things that go into keeping Beulah the welcoming and inviting faith community that it has been for more than 151 years. Please give generously to your money and your time. Thank you. Uh, I got a couple other things I like to talk about. If anybody wants some baby ducks, we've got <laughs> 10 of them in the courtyard again. I may come over tomorrow and try to herd them out if somebody wants to get here and take them home. But uh, other than that, if, if anybody wants to volunteer during the week to come and weed or clean out flower beds or anything, you are welcome to do it because we have not had a work day. Thank you all and be generous. Thank you, Bob. You can go back to your car. If you, if you can't hear us on your radio, turn up the volume on your radio. Is there anybody that can't hear? If, toot your horn if you can't hear. Very good. Uh, another announcement that we have is we're having our second healing conversation on anti-racism tonight at 7 o'clock uh, via Zoom. This is sponsored by the Matthew 25 team. I also want to share with you some distressing news. On Thursday, a member of our community committed suicide on our property. Very, very sad. His first name was Alfred. Especially in COVID-19 days, mental illness is such a horrendous and debilitating disease. We need to reach out to our friends, to our neighbors, to those who are suffering from depression and other types of mental illness to help them get the resources they need. We will send out to you uh, various links to resources that our very own Katie Hockenberry has supplied to us. Uh, one in particular is Louisville Seminary has, uh, is offering free counseling right now. Uh, and I will give you the contact information for that. So let us have a moment of silence for Alfred and others suffering from mental illness. And then I will close our moment of silence in prayer. God of all mercy, from whose love nothing can separate us, we pray this day for all persons dealing with mental illness and those who love and care for them. Especially this day, we pray for all whose lives have been touched by suicide, for those who have died by suicide and those who have attempted it. We pray for those who, because of mental health challenges such as depression, PTSD, or bipolar disorder, live with thoughts of suicide. We pray for those who live in despair and without hope because of poverty or discrimination. We pray for families and friends, colleagues and coworkers who have been touched by the suicide of a loved one. 
We pray for counselors and therapists, psychologists and psychiatrists, for pastors, rabbis, priests, imams, and for all who seek to help. And we pray too that you might give us the courage and wisdom to be there for others in distress, to offer your love and our care, to help break the silence and change the conversation about suicide, to be your listening ear, your hands, and your heart for others. Amen. Please join me in the call to worship. You accept and bless us, O God. We know this, for you have given us a good earth and the opportunity to live peacefully here. You accept and bless us, O God, for you have placed us in families and with friends to know the experience of your love. You accept and bless us, O God. This is our certainty, for you have given us the church in which to worship and to serve. You accept and bless us, O God, for you sent Jesus amongst us, your pattern of compassion and sign of salvation. For the hymn today, I'll sing the verse and motion to you to sing the refrain. We'll sing two verses. By the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you the Lord of snow and rain. I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them. They turn away. I will break their hearts of stone. Give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. <clears throat> I will hold your people in my heart. Please join me in the prayer of confession. O oh Lord, you taught us to love you and our neighbor, but we have not lived in right relationship or walked in the light of your love. Forgive us for the wrongs we have done. We know that the wages of sin is death, yet we trust in your gift of forgiveness, which is freedom and life in Christ. Amen. Sisters and brothers, your sins are forgiven by the mercy of Christ. Be at peace, for you have been freed from sin, that you may serve with righteousness to the glory and praise of God. And may the peace of Christ be with you all. And 
Amen. And now let us uh, turn to our prayer for illumination. Loving God, as we hear your word this day, send your spirit to equip and inspire us that your grace-filled hospitality may be the center of our lives. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is Matthew 10, verses 40 through 42. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The word of the Lord. Welcome. my Siri say hello <laughs> so even even Siri understands when we say welcome <laughs> yes yes exactly but you know welcoming folks mmm it can be a slippery slope because I have a little secret for you we're all the same but we're all different did you know that? We're all the same, but we're all uniquely different. You know, diversity is difficult. So what do we do on a Sunday if for some reason we're all gonna go out to lunch afterwards and engage in physical distancing and go to a safe place? But what if some of us don't have money for lunch? Should hungry people come to church and go away hungry? How do we communicate? Well, if you send emails, what happens to those without computers? If you send postcards, how do you include people who don't have an address? How do you find transportation for people who don't have a car? Do you know how expensive it is to make people with mobility challenges feel truly welcome? What if you're used to wearing your Sunday best to worship, but you're not sure that your plumber has Sunday clothes? Can you still invite him? What if you love classical music and then some people think jazz is sacred? What kind of music makes everyone feel welcome? What if your Sunday school class or your book study or your Bible study has for years been talking about what we should think and someone shows up who wants to talk about what we should do? It's hard to share the church with people who are different, but it's impossible impossible to be Jesus's church when some aren't welcome. 20 years ago, I'm going to tell you this story, 20 years ago a lady named Eleanor Grace, isn't that a great southern name, Eleanor Grace, was the pastor of a church, well I'm not going to tell you where she was a pastor, but it's not too far away from here. Her church was a block off the kind of town square that makes you wish that every town had a square. And if you've heard of the city, which I'm not gonna tell you which one it is, but it's in Indiana, it, you probably heard of it because that's where they make furniture. 
Since 1926, this little town has had a company there who makes the most gorgeous furniture and most people couldn't afford to buy it. Eleanor Grace's salary at that time was $14,000 a year. Now that's not her housing allowance. That's her total salary. Don't get any ideas. But the manse where she lived was filled with gorgeous furniture because that factory was right there. So in the late 80s, the middle adult Sunday school class, and isn't that an attractive name for a class? The middle adult Sunday school class? Decided they didn't want to sit in folding chairs anymore. They worked out a deal with one of the managers in the factory's chair department. The 14 members of the class would spend $40 each to buy materials for the chairs that would normally cost around $500. And remember, this is in 1980, a $500 chair. I can't imagine how much it would be now. The company would make the chairs on a Saturday when the factory was closed. Eleanor Grace thought this was a great idea. You know, Jesus was a carpenter. How could he not love this? And the craftsmen of the chairs would be simply amazing. Fine wood, deep, rich finishes, exquisite details like brass trim. Any one of these chairs would class up a place at the Palace of Versailles. Then Eleanor Grace found out that they were making exactly 14 chairs. And she asked, can we make a few extra? The answer was, well, the class only has 14 members. We're the ones who are paying for the chairs and doing the work. Eleanor Grace naively asked, well, what about when visitors come? Eleanor Grace was told, well, we still have folding chairs, and if a member isn't there, they can use one of our chairs. Eleanor Grace foolishly asked, but won't you feel funny sitting in these beautiful chairs while visitors sit in folding chairs? Again, Eleanor Grace was informed, well, that's not going to happen. And they were right. Before the new chairs arrived, the teacher of the middle adult Sunday school class put a lock on the door. There had never been any locks on any of the doors at the church except the outside doors. They explained that they wanted the chairs to stay in the room and they didn't want folks getting in there on Tuesday nights. Several years later, Eleanor Grace went back for the church's anniversary. They still had the 14 chairs in the room and they looked fabulous but most went unfilled on Sundays the majority of the class was gone the teacher had gotten mad about something and gone to another church the young adult class was getting bigger the senior adults were doing well but the middle adults didn't have anybody new what could be less surprising? That's what happens when we decide that the church will always be who we are now. That's what happens when we keep the best chairs for ourselves. And that's what happens when we want some people to stay out of our church. But what would happen if we believed in Jesus' vision for the church? What would happen if different kinds of people were part of the same church, the same community? People who are different push us to be better. People who are hurting teach us to love. People who ask different questions help us find our way to better answers. I've come to the conclusion, as much as it chagrins me, that Paul was actually correct. 
We're all in this by the grace of God, Paul said. It's not about who we are. It's about God's love for all of us. If the Presbyterian church is going to look like Jesus' church, we need more poor people to show us Christ in the least of these. We need more rich people with portfolios in need of a good cause. We need people who drive SUVs and people who don't drive anything. We need PhDs and graduates of the School of Hard Knocks. We need people who kneel when they pray and people who put their hands in the air and people who honk their horns at worship. We need people who live in this neighborhood and people willing to drive an hour for something different. We need gay Christians to help us understand their struggles. We need straight Christians who know the relationship between orientation and faith is difficult. We need conservative Christians who hold tenaciously to the central truths of our faith. We need liberal Christians who force us to think in new ways. We need young people to give us a sense of liveliness. We need old people to give us a sense of liveliness. We need people of color to help us confront our white privilege. We need white people to use their privilege to confront racism. We need non-Presbyterians to expand our understanding of faith. We need Presbyterians who appreciate the good gifts of our heritage. We need people who sinned mightily and people who seem to have only gold stars by their names. If we let the Holy Spirit have her way, we could be the church for all kinds of people. Can you imagine, can you imagine how wonderful it would be if the church looked like the kingdom of God? Amen. <clears throat> let us pray. For our prayers of intercession, for our prayers of intercession this morning, um, we there will be a refrain for us to engage in, and that refrain is, "Come, Lord Jesus." And I'm going to show you all how to sign that right now. Um, so it's three signs. The first one, fairly simple, come and start up if we're imagining heaven above us come and then Lord make an L with your dominant hand your right hand or left hand and then cross it at the your opposite shoulder at the top and then bring it down to the opposite hip Lord so come Lord and then Jesus is some of you all might know the sign for Bible and it's the first part of that so Jesus, if you put your hands out and sort of put your middle fingers forward and tap the middle of your palms. So imagine the nails in Jesus' hand. Jesus. So we'll do that all together one time, okay? Come, Lord, Jesus. And that'll be the refrain, and I'll stand up here and do it with you guys. Thank you, Jenny. Let us pray. Creator of all things, seen and unseen, you blew the spirit of Christ into apostles and disciples enslaved by sin, freeing your people from death and captivating us with your steadfast love. You raised the body of Christ, the church and the world, to proclaim the good news of salvation. For the sake of the world, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus. We pray for all whom you call into the work of the church. May they know the presence of your spirit to strengthen, guide, correct, comfort, and challenge. Come, Lord Jesus. We pray for all whose lives are touched by the church's witness. May they feel the healing hands of Christ Jesus, serving them with gentleness, kindness, grace, and love. Come. 
We pray for the world into which you call the church. Help us to be faithful in giving ourselves away for the sake of the gospel. In your spirit, let us show the peace of Christ to a world of violence. Share the bread of heaven with a world of hunger. Offer springs of living water to a world of pollution and lead the way of truth and life with the gifts of faith, hope, and love until you bring the fullness of your new creation. Now let us pray the prayer that Christ taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Just a reminder that uh, the bin for offering is located as you exit to Bartstown Road. And in these COVID-19 days, we are asking uh, that you not uh, give us any coins, <laughs> no coins. Um, I know that uh, Bucket Sunday is usually coins, but it would be helpful if we either had uh, checks or cash or gold bullion or uh, your jewelry or your car keys. Uh, so if you wouldn't mind doing that. So I know it's a muggy day, it's raining, but this is a glorious, glorious day, and thanks be to God for each one of you. And as you depart, know that the blessing of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is with you this day and every day. Amen.